Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and I did an unboxing video of the Simon Says Stamp July 2018 card kit, and finally got a chance to make some cards with it. Ended up using just the stamp set for this video because I wanted to make multiple cards, so I wanted it to be a little bit simpler. So I'm using the One Cool Pineapple stamp set, and I have some Arteza watercolor paper here. I've done some videos with this. And I'm kind of liking this watercolor paper. It's different. It has a different sort of texture to it. But I cut down several pieces so that they're about four and a half by six inches, roughly. Um, my original plan was to tape these down, but then I ended up going even simpler, so I didn't need to. And I'm just stamping the images from the set onto these pieces of watercolor paper with Simon's Intense Black Ink. And then... Um, Stamping everything multiple times because especially the sentiments, they're very solid sentiments. So I would use my stamp platform and stamp everything. And the set, the reason why I want to make multiple cards is every sentiment has a little, you know, coordinating image. And I couldn't decide which one to choose. So I did panels with all of the images, all of the sentiments. And then once I was done stamping everything, I pulled out my Arteza Real Brush markers or pens Again, done several videos on these. I've had a lot of people asking what I think about them. I know I still need to do like a standalone like review video, I guess. I have the big set of 96. Yeah. And I really like them. They're great little markers. So for this, for all these cards, rather than color with the markers and then pull a color out with my water brush, I scribbled the marker colors I wanted to use just onto my little craft mat here. I am working on my Tim Holtz glass mixed media mat with the little craft mat, but you could use anything. You could scribble onto, you know, a lot of times I've done things where I'll scribble into plastic packaging, anything non-porous, um, or the standalone little craft mat that you can get as well. And I just scribble the color. I really like how these markers, like, it's very easy to do. I've had other markers in the past where just trying to scribble, you know, to create a little palette like this, um, you don't get enough color out of the marker, if that makes sense. So these, I just simply scribble, and then I pick up the color with my water brush, and I went to painting all of these backgrounds. And all of them I kept fairly simple, even with the coloring. This one specifically, I did all of the watermelon slices except for the one above the sentiment. I did them in kind of lighter colors. I didn't want them to stand out as much. And then the one right above the sentiment, I did in a deeper pink, a deeper green, just to make it stand out a bit more. And then I just used a light blue marker and picked up color with my water brush and painted the entire background really quickly and easily. Um, and for all of them, I use just my little Tim Holtz detail water brush that I use for just about everything. And even for backgrounds like this, I was able to, um, use just that little brush. And then I use, sometimes I'd use the marker directly or else I'll pick up the color with, um, the water brush, but I use the marker to add a little bit of just shading around the sentiment just to make it stand out a little bit more. So after I finish the first one, then I go on to the next one. And for this little sunshine one, um, for this one, I painted the color directly onto the little sun with the marker and then pulled it out a little bit. And then I scribbled the same color onto my craft mat. And then I'm just picking that up with my brush and painting it on, on camera. You, ca you can't really see the sun rays, but I did the lighter sun rays first. And then I actually picked out a little bit of a deeper yellow color and then added those and pulled that out a little bit further as well and then added a bit to the center of the sun. And then I did um, also go around the sentiment and add that little bit of shading with the yellow just to, you know, intensify it. So all of these cards, that's what I did. Just very simple watercoloring, not a whole lot of colors. Um, I have other ways that I'm gonna kind of pump them up just a bit. But this is kind of my go-to method if I want to create several cards at once, especially ones that are all different, you know, all have different colors, different images, whatever. So for my little pineapple, I'd stamp the pineapple and then the sunglasses is actually a separate stamp in that set. So I stamped that right above, but I was thinking later, I was like, oh, this would be really cute too if you stamped it and then you stamp the sunglasses and just cut them out and then like pop them up with a little bit of foam tape. That would look really cute, but I wanted these all to be pretty, pretty flat. So, um, same thing, P scribbled my color onto my little palette and would just pick up the color with my water brush. With this one, I did add a little bit of gray and then I added a bit of brown to it just to warm it up a bit, um, to give the pineapple, you know, something to sit on. Some of my backgrounds, everything's floating. Other times I feel like they need to be standing or something, which is the same with this flamingo. I'd stand the flamingo and then I'm going to color a little bit of ground so that he's like actually standing on something. 
So colored in the flamingo with a hot pink marker and this that area was still wet when I started adding the black for his legs. So before it really got a chance to bleed into the body, I quickly hit that with my heat tool to dry that area. And then I can fix that in a minute. I'll just kind of color over it and dab. Um, color over it with just a clean brush there. And then dab at it with a piece of paper towel. And that'll like soak up that excess black. And then I can color it over the pink. And you can't even tell that I messed that up. <laughs> so colored in my little flamingo. And then I just added a little bit of green for something for him to stand on. And then I'm going to add um, some pink to the sentiment just to make it pop. And I'm going to just keep doing this over and over again for all of these panels that I ended up stamping. So altogether, I ended up doing six panels. So I make six cards and they're just fun. And of course I can't, you could keep them simpler, but I always have ways of, you know, stepping things up. <laughs> so for this one, I stamped the sentiment and I only stamped the fish along the lower portion of this panel. And I only put the blue like further down. I kind of wanted to give it that look as if it was, you know, either a fish tank or the ocean or whatever. So I painted my little background with the just a blue marker and then I'm going to again hit that with my heat tool just to quickly dry it. You could just let this air dry but I wanted to make sure it was dry before I go and start coloring the fish because I don't want that color bleeding out everywhere. So I used a couple different orange markers to color in all of these fish and then add a little bit of blue to the sentiment. Um, I did that off camera. With these I just kind of went in with light color first and then I just kept adding layers to intensify the color so that these pop just a little bit more. Um, so another thing I'm liking about these markers is they layer very nicely. So color in all of my little characters here and then I'm going to go on and do the background with the cactus. And with that background I did stamp the cactus like all over very similar to the one I did with the watermelon slices. And for this one, I'm going to mix a couple different shades of green for the different cacti. Just painting it on and then while it's still wet, adding in the other shade of green. So you get this kind of like a different mottled green sort of effect. And then add a little bit of brown to the center of the pots. And then one of the markers in the set is almost like a terracotta color. So I was able to just scribble that on and then paint all of the little pots with that color. And then I just use kind of a brighter turquoise this time, but I water it down a little bit and then quickly paint in my background. Just, I thought it'd be nice to add a bit more color to this. So once I've got my background um, completely painted, I'm going to go in with the same shade, but just more intense, so less water, and add a little bit of shading around these cacti and the pots just to make them stand out that little bit more. So go in, add all of that, and then I'm going to do the same thing to that sentiment so that it's got its little bit of definition as well. And then once I'm done with all of that and everything is dry, I'm going to take my white jelly roll pen and use that to add highlights. And I also use it to add a little more like spines and spikely bits, spiky, spikely, spiky bits to the cacti. Um, while I was coloring these, I was my original plan. I was going to do like white splatter on everything because that's what I like to do. But instead, I thought I'd have a little bit more control by using my white gel pen. Plus, I can use that to add bits of highlights to these images, as I show, as well as to the sentiment. I really liked adding the highlights to the sentiments. It made them just pop a little bit more. And like on this one, I added highlights to his sunglasses and to the top of the little pineapple and whatnot. And then I would just add little lines to the kind of upper areas of all these sentiments and it just gave it that little extra something. So I've got the shading with the color marker and then the highlights with the white gel pen and it just worked. So I did the same thing with the flamingo here, add a little bit of dots for texture, added some highlight to the ground and then went along and added a little highlights to the sentiments. So as is my usual method, I do all the same things at once. So, you know, I did all the stamping at once. Then I did all the coloring at once. Now I'm doing all the highlights with the gel pen at once. Once this is done, I'm going to do all of the die cutting at the same time. Like working in like on basically in stations like this, it makes it go a lot smoother and a lot faster so I can do multiple cards at one time. So um, I did the same thing with the little sun, added little highlights and then um, added highlights to the sentiment. And then once I'm done all of that, I die cut all of these with Simon's, the largest of their stitched rectangle wafer dies. And then I also cut down some white craft foam to be just slightly smaller than these. 
And you could easily use liquid adhesive for this or other like tape runners. I've used all kinds of things. I just decided to pull out this, I have this huge roll of score tape that's like two and a half inches wide. And it just sits in the drawer because I don't use it very often. So I pulled it out for this because it was perfect. So for my first piece, I put the adhesive on the back of my stamped and colored panel. And then I'm going to peel off the backing and then I'm going to press the craft foam onto that and add um, two more pieces of the adhesive here. So this is like super strong. This isn't going anywhere. I chose the craft foam because it was quicker than using foam tape. Um, normally I would use, you know, Simon's Big Mama foam tape roll because I just wanted that bit of dimension. But the thought of applying foam tape to the back of six panels, I was like, I'd be here all day. <laughs> so using the craft foam was just a much faster option. So after I did this first one, I applied, you know, like I said, I applied the um, score tape, peeled off the backing, stuck on the craft foam, applied two more pieces of score tape, peel off the backing again, and then I'm going to stick this to my card base. I found what was easier was I went along after this and applied all of the score tape to both sides of the craft foam, just cut a whole bunch of pieces all the same size, stuck them onto all of that craft foam so they all had their adhesive on it and then would start sticking them to all of the um, panels I'd created and then sticking them to the cards and that just made it go so much faster. So now I've got another panel here that I'd put that um, already pre-adhesived foam onto and then peeled that off and all my card bases were done in one step as well. So all my card bases are just heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored or yeah, cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. So everything is um, a two size cards. So then I just can go along now and start just peeling off that backing, sticking that craft foam behind each panel and then adhering each of these to their card bases. So just quick and easy. And it just is another way to step up what is otherwise a fairly simple card, you know, adding dimension, it just gives it that little extra something. And using something like craft foam or using like foam tape and just applying it evenly um, just ensures that it's not going to get crushed at all when it goes through the mail. So after I did all of my card bases, I had to finish the insides, of course. So I pulled out a whole bunch of different Distress Oxide inks and I just used the same main image that I used on all the card fronts on the inside of the card. So for this one, I pulled out the fish and then I've got some Distress Oxide ink and I'm just going to ink up my stamp with that and I'll ink it up, stamp it, and then stamp it more than once before inking it up again. So I get, you know, the first generation, the second generation, and with some of them, even a third generation of ink just to give it that little bit of definition. For the little sun one, there's a little solid image for the sun, so I stamped that in um, the squeezed lemonade Distress Oxide ink, and then stamped the actual sun in a darker yellow ink, which I think was fossilized amber. So I did that, and then for these other images where I wanted to use more than one color of Distress Oxide ink, I get down so my eyes are kind of on level with the stamp, and then I just use the corner of the stamp to ink up the stamp. So I inked up the pineapple with the, this one was fossilized amber and um, lucky clover. And same thing, I would stamp it three times before I would ink it up again. So I went along and did this with all of the insides of all of my cards. So they've all got a bit of, you know, color and something fun on the inside. And then as my last way of stepping it up, I pulled out a whole bunch of my Nouveau gloss drops, summer gloss, summer glitter, and added those rather liberally to my cards as a final bit of embellishment. So this just gives it a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of shine, and completely finishes off these cards. So as I have made a point of doing lately with these is I like to do one card at a time when I'm adding my gloss drops, just so that I don't end up smearing it, like rather than just doing one color on all six cards and then going on to the next color. I like to do one card at a time, once I'm done placing all my gloss drops, I can set this aside. I have a separate little shelf now where I set these aside to dry. Um, they need a good 24 hours to be completely dry. After I've applied them, I tap my card front firmly onto like an ink pad or my work surface or whatever. And that will kind of help smooth out and flatten the gloss drops a bit so they look more like enamel dots. And I just go along and do all six. Just do one at a time, set each one aside to dry, work on the next one. So after these are all dry, then my cards are complete. So here's all six fun little watercolored and glossed and highlighted cards. Um, I will, as always, I will have links to all of the supplies I used in the description box below the video as well as on my blog. As of filming and posting this, the July kit is still available. It won't be available for much longer. 
Um, I will link to the kit, but I'll also link to the stamp set individually because everything is available individually. So you can check that out below if you're interested, as well as on my blog. And I always link to my blog in the first link directly below the video. So thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.